Welcome, listeners, to episode 17 of Soccer Unplugged. My name is Mark Polisic. Cool. Well, I just got back from a trip, uh, a trip from London. So, uh, you know, it's been fun uh, watching my son obvi- uh, obviously start with his new team, Chelsea. And uh, I spent some time with him over the past two weeks and kind of handed the baton over to my wife because she's there now. Uh, Dan, I did all the grunt work because we're moving in, moving him into a new house, you know, um, in Wimbledon, so uh, which is about 20 minutes from London, and uh, you know all the deliveries came with all the big boxes and couches and everything. So that's when I was there helping out, and now everything's in and in place, and now the wife's there making everything look really nice. So uh, well, that's good because I wouldn't want you doing that job, <laughs> you know. No. No, it was funny. She's on the phone to me like, well, is that in the living room? This, that end table goes with that couch. This go, I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, uh, so basically, um, you're right. It's best she's there right now handling those details. So um, anyway, this today we're going to discuss, uh, you know, I, I, I've i been getting the same question thrown at me here uh, since the summer began uh, in, in similar ways. So uh, w- what... Uh, what I think we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of hit this listener question first, and then um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a story about my trip uh, to London and with my son. So actually, we'll do that first, tell you a little bit of a story. It's kind of a funny story, uh, obviously soccer related. Then we'll get into the listener question. Then we'll uh, do a little current events. I want to talk a little bit about the uh, women's national team. Uh, and uh, then I want to talk uh, about the hot topic of VAR, uh, video assistant refereeing. And then uh, finally, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the problems with social media and professional sports uh, and uh, some threats being made to some players, unfortunately. So uh, I know you're ready for it. I've kind of briefed you a little bit about our discussions uh, and how we were going to handle the show today. And uh, hopefully you're ready to go. I'm ready. Let's do it. I, uh, I, I don't know this London story, so I'm interested to hear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I just got back this past week and had a, had a good time. I mean, obviously, we were in a hotel first. My, you know, Christian was in a hotel as he went through preseason because he hadn't um, picked, a, picked a house yet or anywhere to live. So finally, we took care of that. We found a place he's comfortable with, moved in. Um, got that all settled, you know, but they've, uh, he had a driver taking him to and from training, uh, just to make his life a little bit easier. So, but obviously being a 20 year old, he wants to drive. So, you know, the story here begins with him getting a car and, uh, you know, learning how to drive on the other side of the road and the wheel on the opposite side in the car. So obviously that all kind of is not easy for anybody. Uh, and, uh, was kind of fun you know in the car with him for the first time when he's driving on the other side but he handled it all well and you know we both took it slow so uh but anyway the story begins with uh, i drove him to training one day and the training this particular wednesday was at stanford bridge because they had a kind of an open training session for the fans so we get up in the morning he's like yeah dad why don't you come drive and so i Drove him there and we hung out. And on the way back, after training, he was kind of the last one to leave the, the, the locker room. So we get it in the car and security takes us down to his car because everything is, all the players have their own security guard taking him in and around the stadium. So we get in the car and we start to leave Stanford Bridge and realize that there's just a massive crowd of fans waiting out there. And when I say a massive crowd, it's not just, you know, 50 people or 100 people. There could have been thousands of people outside the stadium waiting. So we get in the car and, you know, he, we're both pretty much kind of like, oh my God, how are we going to get out of here? You know, so this kind of, the security lets us out. We turn onto the main road out of Stanford Bridge. So, but you're still in the city of London. So there's lights everywhere. And, we stop at the first light because we had no choice really so you could imagine this massive crowd banging on our windows wanting obviously christian's autograph or or selfies or photos 
So, you know, Christian opens the window um, and he starts to sign quick and takes a few pictures. But obviously the light turns green and I'm driving right now. So then we move on to the next light, which was about 100 yards further up. Now, you got to remember the people are, are, are now running with the car to the next light. So as we're running to the car with the next light, you're attracting more interest in the city from everyone else around. So everyone else now starts to follow the crowd. And it was just kind of hit me that, you know, obviously I know my son plays at a high level. He signs autographs and he's very well liked and, you know, professional status and all that. But it just really hit me how crazy it is. You know, and yeah. you know, he had it. It's a full blown celebrity. It, it, he had it in London. I mean, I'm sorry. He had it in Dortmund, you know, um, but this was kind of a different level. And the funny thing, this was as we're going from light to light, okay, the older, less fitter crowd started to drop uh-huh. off. Okay. <laughs> Are you with me now? Yeah, yeah. So you, by the end, so, it's just uh, so listen. So Kenyan we get, marathoners. It, it's, it, so we get to the first light, second light, third light, and the, and it's dwindling. But God bless these few kids. Now you're talking teenagers are the only ones now because we're almost. I'm not kidding. We got to be almost a mile away from the stadium. So they're sprinting because they know there's another light coming up. You know, within 200 yards. So we finally get there and the light and he and my son opens the window and he go and the, and the two kids, I can't exactly remember what they said, but, you know, in their British accent, they're like, oh, my God, mate, thank God you stopped. I think I'm going to die. You know, something like that. <laughs> and then and then he looked, turns to his buddy and he says, man, we got to get fitter. And I'm yeah. thinking to myself, anyone would be gasping for air if they sprinted a whole, you know, block right. following a car the whole way. So. Uh, pretty, pretty funny. My wife, um, I'm sorry, my son and I thought got a little kick out of it, you know. Um, and then uh, we finally were on our way home on the main road. But uh, you know, it was great. It was great to be there with him and, and watch him train and kind of see his environment and just kind of how how crazy uh, the Premier League is and and you know just football in London in general. With obviously there being such big teams there. And uh, very difficult to go anywhere without uh, without fans being around and you know asking for autographs and things of that nature. So it was uh, quite the journey, uh, quite the, the the beginning there for my son. So yeah, that's uh, awesome. And that yeah. that'll be, I mean, just for listeners, right? Because they don't normally train at Stanford Bridge. They have a training ground that's separate, and and maybe uh, I'm sure there will be less people there present uh, at those types of regular training sessions yes exactly they they train in uh about a half an hour from this stadium outside of london so uh it's very protected and secluded so it's not like that every day right you know there's a gate no one's allowed past the gate so but uh yeah this this was just a special training you know obviously uh they do it in the beginning of the year just to kind of uh open training the season ticket holders and and other guests uh, that that can come so that's why it was at the stadium so 